again to my youtube hello and welcome once again to my youtube channel this reflex image if this is your first time visiting don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and also turn on the notification icon and if you're already a subscriber welcome back so in today's video i won't be doing so much manipulation it's not every time we do tends to manipulate in i way you can just do simple manipulation as you going to look hyper realistic and it's going to give you a nice outcome so that's what we'll be doing in this picture. What I will be doing is I'll just be adding these two doors to the left and the right hand side of my picture and I'm going to export it. So the PNG file will be given to you guys for free. Don't worry, I'll be dropping more free files from now on. So if you are yet to join my Telegram group, just go there and join it today where I'll be dropping more files and also practice materials you can learn from. So this picture we're talking with Canon USR, a three light setup. As you can see, the third light is coming from the top. And it was shot on row. That's the reason why we're seeing it in the camera row. So I just did the basic settings here. I did the highlight, I did the shadow. So once I'm done, what I just need to do is to open the picture in Photoshop. Just click on open. So I won't take much of your time. I won't go through how I remove the background process. If you want to know how I do all that, just watch all my other videos on my YouTube channel. I'm going to help you do that. I'm only going to be showing you a simple trick I use in actually achieving that high end result in no time. And also, this picture, I did the retouching in just what, in less than one minute using Evoto AI. What I just do is just head over to Evoto AI, I retouch the picture by just clicking on this slider, just click on few sliders, and the picture was retouched for me perfectly. Then I had to open the picture back in Photoshop and start manipulation. So now let's say we're done with that right now. So the next thing we need to do is to expand our picture. So once you open your picture back in Photoshop, just expand your picture the way you see fit. So I'll be cropping my picture into my 4x5 pixel. So, if you don't know the reason why I crop my picture on 4x5 is because I do post mostly on Instagram. So, I don't like it when Instagram resize my picture for me. I love my picture being the way I want it to be. Not other software application dictating what my picture size is going to be. So, I'll just go to the crop tool, which is over here. And I'll pick my 4x5 into bracket 8x10. Then I'm going to expand it from the bottom. And also, I'll do the same thing from the top also. So you can see like this. All I just need to do is to click on my enter key. The next thing I'll be doing right now is to do what? Is to remove my subject from the background. So I'll go to the next document and I'll see you guys there which I've actually did the retouching and stuff. Here's the picture, as you can see, it's already been expanded. So the next thing we're doing right now is for we to do what? Is for we to remove our subject from the background. So for we to do that right now, here's what we want to try to achieve right now. Here's the results we want to achieve in our picture. So let's turn this over right now. Don't look at this. This is just a formality layer. As you can see, it's actually locked. So we'll go to your background layer. From the background layer, duplicate it by clicking on Command J on your keyboard. If you are using a window PC, Control J. So Control J on your keyboard right now. Next thing you need to do is to select your subject. You have to select your subject out of the background. If you don't know how to do this, please learn how to do this because this is going to tell me how your manipulation is going to come nice, come out nice or not. So if you miss from this process, trust me, you're going to have an issue when it comes to bringing in another background and the finalizing of the picture. So next thing I'll be doing is to select my subject. There are so many tools you can use in the selection, but I already did the selection. So I'll just go to load my selection right now. I'm going to load up my selection right now. As you can see, I already have my selection. Next thing you have to do is to do what? Right click on it, pick a selection to right click, then go to feather. I'll be friendly by two pixel. Then I'm going to click what? I'm going to click on my OK on my keyboard. Next thing I just need to do is just to max it. Click on the max icon. That being said right now, go back to your background layer and duplicate it once more by clicking on Ctrl J again. So let's name this one right now. Let's name it just background. Just background. Just for we to differentiate between our background layer and our subject layer. Just background. Then what we're going to do right now is to hold down your control key. If you're using a MacBook command key, then click on the max you just created on your subject layer. Click on the max. So it's going to bring back selection for you. After that, let's go. Go to select, under select, go to modify, then expand. I'll be expanding by 8 pixel. Then I'm going to click on what? I'm going to click on OK. Next now I'll be doing, I'll pick my rectangle marker tool, which is right over here. I'm going to scroll from the top. I'm going to scroll from the right. The reason I was able to scroll this two times is because of what? I'm on addition. If I'm on a single selection, the moment I selected this one, if, I'm to, if I want to select this, it's going to select this for me. So take note of that also. So I'll come to the left hand side, I'll do the same thing also. And I'll also come to the footer area and I'll repeat the same step there. What I'll just need to do right now, just to right click on it, then I'll go to fill. On that field, I'll make sure my content away is turned on. And I'll do what? I'll click on OK. Then I'll wait for it to load up. Don't forget, we are on just we are on the back on the layer called just background. So we are not on the background layer, we are not on our subject layer. What we want to do right now is we want to separate the both uh, background. We want the subject to be separate, we want the background to be separate right now. 
So let's wait for it to load up. Then once we're done with this, all you just need to do is to bring in the files we want. And as you can see, we've expanded our background. So someone that don't know how the initial picture is might think is how wide the background is. So the next thing we need to do is just to click on Ctrl D on our keyboard right now. Then we'll do what? We'll go to our file manager. Go to where the file is located. So here's the file I'll be using over here. This is the file I'll be using. What I just need to do is just to drag it out to my Photoshop. I'll wait for it to load up. Then I'm going to expand it. I will expand it till I see fit. I'm going to expand it till I see fit. Okay, I want it to be around this way. I was still going to expand it. I'm still going to expand it like this. So this is how I want the first one to be. I'll click on my enter key. But the issue I have right now is, assuming I'm using a white background, I can actually leave these boxes this way. I can leave it this way. But since I'm actually working what? I'm working on a dark background and I want the dark background to show inside. So what I just need to do is just to rasterize this right now. The background I just brought in, rasterize it, click on rasterize, right click on it. And I'm going to rasterize the layer. So just right click and search for where rasterize is. This is it over here. Click on it. So I'm going to zoom in very well. And I'll go to my rectangle marker to which is over here. I'll make sure I'm selecting my addition. And I'm going to select out all these boxes so that I'll be able to delete them. So I'm, I'll start from here. I'm going to select it. So take your time to do it. I don't think this should take much of your time. I'll select it. I'm going to click on select. I'm going to select it this way. So you can zoom in very well so that I can see what you're doing. So I'm going to fast forward this process. See you guys at the end. So let's say we're done with the selection right now. What you just need to do is just to click on your delete key on your keyboard and automatically it's going to delete all this area for you. Ctrl D to the select as you can see. Look at how nice this looks like right now. So the next thing I will do is I'll still going to bring this the same uh this is the same door i'll still go back to my file manager and i'll bring it out again this time around i'm going to drag it to the left hand side so that it's going to be as if it's a sliding door on both sides so i'm just going to increase the size also again till i see fit and i'm going to make sure it's fitting in perfectly the way i want it to be i want it to rhyme with the height of this particular one so i'm going to do what i'm going to shift it to the edge of the hand let's zoom in very well so i can see what i want to want to do so i'm going to shift it very well to the edge I'll click on OK. But what I want for this one is I want it to be above the hand. So I'll do what? I'm going to drag it above my subject layer. So that it's going to be covering the hand, which is actually OK this way. Then I'll reduce the opacity. I'll bring down the opacity like this. I'll bring it down the opacity. But let's, before we do that, let's rasterize our layer. Right click on it. Click on rasterize layer. So I'm going to zoom in. So for this to be hyper realistic, here is the main deal right now. This finger has to be doing what? Has to be at the front. Just this finger alone, the rest has to be at the back. So for what to do that, just pick your polygonal axis tool, then select out the finger, select the finger out, select the finger out, like this. So let's select it out like this. You can see. Then you do what? Click on your delete key, and you're going to delete the area. Ctrl D to select. So if I to zoom back right now and to increase the opacity of what to just reduce the opacity 100 percent, as you can see. It's looking hyper realistic as if yes, she's actually holding the door. But we're still going to do what? Delete all these boxes over here also again. So if I were to do that right now, I'm going to fast forward the process also again. And boom, we are done. All I just need to do right now is just to click on my what? Click on delete key. And automatically it's going to delete that for me. Ctrl D to the select. Can you see what you just did right now? Which is very, very nice and hyper realistic. If you are shooting maternity and I think this is one of the best options for you to choose from. You're going to make it your picture look very, very nice. If you have a concept like this, especially if you are using a white background. So very, very simple and straightforward. All you just need to do is to color grade your picture, which I'll be doing right now. Just to click on my adjustment layer, click on my color lookup. Under load 3D load, I'm going to scroll down to the one I want to make use of, which is my perfect skin. If I don't have that over here, I'm just going to be using my what? My Mela chocolate. Just darken it up a little bit. So we'll look for my Mela chocolate over here. So I'm just going to pick one of the skin tone I want to use right over here. I'm going to pick on this right now. And boom, my picture is ready to go. So if you find this video educating, don't forget to drop a like. Someone out there might be in need of this video. And also drop a like out there. See you guys on my next video tutorial. Reflex out.